At Light Hands Horsemanship on the grounds of beautiful intrepid farms in Santa Ynez, California, I talked to horseman Walter Tharp, who spent years developing an ingenious way to feed horses hay. I wanted to know why. For the last three and a half million years, the modern horse has grazed to survive. And everything in his digestive system is designed for him to graze 24 hours a day, be have food available, understand that he lives, breeds, walks, sleeps, runs in his food. So he's designed to, whenever he gets hungry, put his head down and eat. It's always there. It's always there. Yeah. What we've done is turn it into an eight to five society and put our horse on our feeding schedule. And they do not do well with empty stomachs. What, wh why? I mean, what's the problem with having an empty stomach? Acid runs nonstop 24 hours a day through their stomach to digest that constant supply of food. When it builds up to a level that they're uncomfortable, they put their head down and chew. And when they chew that food and, and they graze, saliva buffers the acid. And this is what's interesting. You see horses in a pasture, they, they'll graze for a while, then they come back over and rest, and then they graze. What they're doing is playing that balancing game with that acid. Huh. As it builds up, they graze, and then they graze with, with small bites, a lot of saliva to neutralize the acid. When it comes to balance, they walk away. 20 to 30 minutes after their meal, their stomach is empty. What happens though when the stomach becomes empty? The bottom of the stomach is real glandular and thick. The top is a very thin lining. And when a horse's stomach's empty and the acid comes up from the bottom, mm -hmm. as he performs or trains or whatever you do with him when you're riding, it splashes up in the upper lining. And that upper lining is very delicate and, and can burn a hole through it in as little as 15 minutes to open your horse on an empty stomach. Wow. Now, I've talked to a lot of people about horse nutrition. I've never heard somebody bring in all of this about the saliva and the pH balance and all that. How did you learn all of that? I was doing uh, rehab on uh, foundered horses and horses with insulin resistance problems. Yeah. And uh, it all comes back to the way we're feeding them. Um, that's a type two sugar diabetes more or less. And it reacts to sugar. When we feed our horses twice a day feedings, the first thing they do, the reason they're snuffling through all that hay and breathing the dust is to eat the sugar first. Sugar makes you run fast, but when you eat too much sugar, we all know you don't run very fast. You wanted to see how horses actually selected and picked a bite and what they did with it. Tell me how you did that research. Well, what we did is I looked at several different designs of feeders. I knew that they needed to slow down, but I didn't know how to slow them down and have it be effective because you can't force a horse to do anything and, and end up with good results. So we went out, filmed several hours of the horses grazing. We took some samples and we built a feeder to actually match the bite size and the way they graze. But you actually got down on the ground. This is the part I loved about this story with your camera and I mean, just right in there. I've been around horses my whole life and I've watched them eat, but I never really watched them eat. And what we realized is they search with their lips, they pull, and while they're, while they're pulling, they're sizing that bite, and then they tear it. But while they're chewing and swallowing, they're searching, pulling, and tearing. If you watch a horse real closely, what they do is they actually gather a bite, and what they're doing is sizing that bite. And that's something you and I will never figure out for them because only the horse knows how big their bites are. Yeah. No different than a person. I can tell when a person's taking too big of a bite because they immediately reach for a glass of water. Okay. So we have our own bite size, so do they. And they, they monitor their bite size to feed their digestive system the right amount of saliva mixed with the hay to go through the digestive system correctly. So is, is the bite size always the same or does that change during feeding? The bite size when they graze is pretty much always the same. And what's interesting about that and why that's important is because if that horse is hungry, you've been riding all day and you turn him loose. It looks like he's eating fast, but if you realize he's chewing fast, he's not getting big mouthfuls like he would with loose hay, which could create a colic. He's actually taking bites about the same size, maybe a little larger, but he's quickly chewing those. So he chews them, applies the saliva. He knows what's good for him. The porter grazer allows the horse to search, pull, tear while he chews and swallows. So that's very important. Yeah. Well, so often it's a matter of kind of getting out of the way of the horse and allow, <laughs> you're, you're smiling. Uh, that seems to be what you intended to do here. Yeah. What it does, it's a very simple design. The pan has a series of holes in it. And these holes are specifically designed for your horse to actually not eat through, but as it rotates in the barrel, whenever he tears off the food, it'll move a little bit. And it'll pop the ends of the hay up. And when the hay sticks up, he bites it. He bites it and tears it. 
And Which is very much like what he does when he's grazing. It's exactly the same okay. as he does when he's grazing. Hence the name Porta Grazer. Right. And uh, the reason it ended up being portable, because as we were designing this, we didn't want to leave it home. One of the biggest causes of colic and other problems on the road is changing the way your horse yeah. eats. Not particularly changing what he eats, because when he gets the food correctly sal salivated and swallows it, it's just food. Yeah. It's how fast he eats that changes it. Yeah. The engineering of this also fascinated me because this is exactly the right tolerance. See, I can't pull it out unless I line it up there. And this actually, the way these are designed, when the hay is lower in the barrel, this lip locks in, so it's double locking. Mm -hmm. So say a horse with insulin resistant problems or laminitis cannot access the free hay and overload the sugar. Even behavioral problems are caused by giving them that flake of alfalfa or regular hay and they eat all the sugar first. There's that kid on Captain Crunch and you're gonna go ride him. <laughs> and see, as it turns, it picks the edge of the hay up. It just keeps feeding the horse. This is not a restrictor. It actually feeds him the way he needs to be fed. If he doesn't feel any hay, he'll actually reach in and move it with his. And they figured that out pretty fast, yeah. I thought. I mean, I wondered with my own horses, are they gonna know to kind of spin this thing? Or they figure that out. Yeah, they figured it out real quick. You and I talked a little bit about this idea of conserving complexity because the new thinking in designing tools for people to use is we don't want them to be complex to use. We want the complexity and the difficulty to have come in thinking it up and the design and the engineering, which is exactly what happened here. You've got a, a, a product that's very, very easy to use. It wasn't easy for you to mm -hmm. create. So you kind of absorbed all that complexity for the rest of us. So good on you. Best of luck to you all. Thank you, Rick.